here. I'm Barb, and this is Knitted Squares, an intentional online community of like-hearted people in love with Jesus and influencing the world for Him. On this channel, I share insights from God's Word along with practical tips and strategies to help you come increasingly closer to Him. If you are new here, welcome. I hope that you'll consider subscribing. And to you, my regulars, thanks for stopping by again and for sharing this episode with those who are going to benefit from it. Well, as I record this, it's New Year's Eve day, and by the time most of you watch it, we can officially say 21 is done, finally. You know, just a year ago, we'd all had plenty of 20 and entered the new year full of optimism and expectation. Of course, 2020 wonderful had some wonderful moments, but celebrations seemed short-lived as they were eclipsed by loss of precious lives and harsh headlines from all around our weary world. I'm sure I'm not alone in wishing for something new in 22. But what we all need goes beyond wishing. We need hope that surpasses wishful thinking. We need hope that comes with a guarantee of better things. Our weary world once again needs the thrill of hope. So, what thrilled you in 2021? What moments or experiences brought that sometimes elusive but always welcome sudden feeling of excitement? For me, it was celebrating college graduations with our girls, Stephanie and Jamie. It was cruising with Bob and Cam through narrow papyrus lined channels in the Okavango Delta in search of the perfect fishing spot. It was receiving the perfect gift from Bob for my birthday. Now, not all of my thrills came with a price tag, however. In fact, most of them did not. The thrill of heart-to-heart -heart conversations with loved ones, either over coffee in person, or, as is often the case since I live on the far side of the sea, on the phone or Zoom. The thrill of hearing how God has answered prayer for people for whom I care deeply. The thrill of doing ministry that results in lives transformed. It never gets old to hear how Jesus has shown up big, bringing joy and peace where sorrow and chaos once were. And there were many thrills experienced with Bob and our ministry team as we gathered weekly to bask in the presence of Jesus, lifting our voices in praise and hosting his glorious presence as he alone thrilled our souls. And now we're getting to the thrill that I want to share with you today. The thrill of hope. This thrill far surpasses sudden feelings of excitement. This thrill is the very cause of excitement at the deepest part of who we are. His name is Jesus, and as the old song says, He is the one who thrills the soul like nothing and no one else can. All that thrills my soul is Jesus. He is more than life to me. Does that sound cliche? Does this sound too good to be true? Well, before I began to know Christ intimately over a decade ago, I would have said maybe so. See, since childhood, I sang the songs in Sunday school and church. I memorized Bible verses for rewards and prizes, including an all-expense-paid trip to Bible camp one year. I had the perfect attendant Sunday school pins for years on end. I knew God. I loved Jesus. I was filled with the Holy Spirit. But still, when I heard older saints talk about Jesus as their all in all, as the lover of their souls, as the joy of their desire, I could only assume they were exaggerating or saying what they should say as Christians. See, Jesus had my head. I knew a lot about him. And he had my hands. I did a lot for him. But it wasn't until he began to capture my heart that I felt the thrill of hope that he alone is. And I've most certainly not arrived. I am in hot pursuit of him. It is my life's one ambition to grow increasingly closer to him all the days of my life. This pursuit will only end on the day it begins in earnest when we, Jesus and me, are face to face in glory together forever with his great big wonderful family. 
The old Gaither chorus says it well. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Oh, the thought of that brings such excitement to my soul, such joyful anticipation, such hope. It is the thrill of hope. And like I said a few moments ago, it is this thrill of hope that our weary world desperately needs. I've heard over and over again throughout the Christmas season, seemingly more this year than ever before, the beloved Christmas carol, O Holy Night. Even comparing notes with a dear friend, she too has heard this timeless song way more than usual. How about you? Have you noticed this? I believe Holy Spirit wants us to really get the message deep down in our souls. He knows what's ahead and he knows what we need and it's nothing short of him and the hope that he brings. In the first stanza of O Holy Night, there is a beautiful phrase that I have been thinking about a lot. In other words, I've been meditating on it. It says, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. You've heard that little phrase like I have all our lives, but think about it. Jesus came. This is undisputed historical fact. God came. He put on our clothes and came to this tiny speck of a planet that he spoke into existence to buy it back from the enemy of our souls. He appeared on that first Christmas, and the soul felt its worth. That's my soul. That's your soul. It has eternal worth. To whom? To God himself. That's worth with a capital W. People spend entire lifetimes trying to establish worth, to be worthy of something. And yet the truth is you and I have worth the moment we are conceived in our mother's wombs. This is why abortion at any stage is unthinkable. Because a soul that has eternal worth to God himself is snuffed out before being able to bring him glory and fulfill the purpose for which it was created. This is why when life does its best to overwhelm us, we are lifted above it and our real and present troubles inexplicably dim as we turn our eyes upon him. Looking into his eyes, being in his presence, we feel our worth and know that there is eternal purpose and meaning in everything we go through. Troubles we will have. Jesus promised that. And they don't typically suddenly vanish when we read the word, pray, and worship. But in those moments, we gain heaven's perspective. The soul feels its worth and knows that God, who has deemed us worthy of his shed blood, will make something beautiful and eternally glorious from every soul that he has created and redeemed. And that brings us to the next line of O Holy Night. After, till he appeared and the soul felt its worth, comes the thrill of hope. The weary world rejoices. There it is. The thrill, the feeling of excitement in the moment and for what's ahead. Hope, capital H, is excitement. Not because of wishful thinking for cloudless days where we tiptoe through the tulips, but because we have a living hope that will not disappoint. I recently read about a man whose eight-year-old daughter died of cancer. He said, living in hope is not the kind of wishy-washy, I hope this will happen, but it probably won't. It's the sure, confident, positive hope, the way God designed us to live. He went on to say as he reflected back on the sorrow and pain of losing their precious girl, he said, our hope was placed not in an outcome, but in the Lord. Yes, in the Lord, that's the key. By definition, thrill means the sudden feeling of excitement or the cause of excitement. Jesus is the thrill. He is the cause of excitement. Hope brings excitement. Jesus brings hope because he is hope. Hebrews 6.19 says, We have this hope as an anchor for our souls, firm and secure. This is the hope which our weary world, our weary souls desperately need a fresh glimpse of. And when our eyes look with his, we rejoice because we know in the deepest part of ourselves that we are anchored and safe and secure no matter how wildly the world reels out of control. As we begin 22, we are right to hope for better days. We are right to continually bring before the Lord our requests and our petitions. He hears and he answers prayer. But we set ourselves up for disappointment when we insist on certain specific outcomes. 
In these last days, Jesus said, certain things must happen that are not pleasant for any of us to watch or walk through, but we have an anchor. Let our hope in 2022 be set on the Lord. Become a thrill seeker. What do I mean by that? Am I saying to go through our days looking for the next burst of excitement? No way. That sounds like, and it is, exhausting. But understand that Christ himself is the thrill, the cause of excitement. When we seek him first and most, Hope eternal sparks joy unspeakable. Jesus is the thrill of hope. And when we experience him, our weary souls rejoice. And as we shine his light to those around us, the weary world also rejoices at his appearing. My prayer for you today is what John the Beloved prayed for those dear to him. I pray that in all respects, you will prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Your soul will prosper as you draw increasingly closer to Jesus and feel your worth to him. I pray that no matter what happens in the physical world, you will prosper and flourish in every meaningful way. I pray that those you love will know Christ intimately and serve him passionately. I pray that through your life and influence, his kingdom will come and his will be done. May lost souls see his appearing through your love and witness. May 2022 be the most hope-filled year of our lives so far because of the thrill of hope. I love you, and I will see you next week.